My name is Alex Dorgen. I'm an Ansible specialist, and I'm going to be walking through how to get ServiceNow to work with the new Ansible automation platform 2.5. So whether you're doing a fresh install of the 2.5 automation platform or you're upgrading from an older version, there are some things that have changed that you need to keep in mind. So all of the AAP 2.5 endpoints are different. So there's different endpoints for generating the tokens themselves, different endpoints for actually launching the job templates or workflows. And also if you're using the event-driven Ansible notification service, you should be leveraging the event streams. So you'll need to update that particular endpoint as well. So depending on what method you're using, whether it's REST, whether it's Ansible Spoke or the event-driven Ansible notification service, you'll need to update those connections and you'll also need to update the OAuth application to use those new endpoints. So I'll jump into all three of those different options and show you what changes need to be made. So let's jump first into the event-driven Ansible notification service. So if you had previously set this up with the Ansible Automation Platform 2.4, the webhook URL was pointing directly to your event-driven Ansible server with a specific port that you had set up for that rulebook activation. In 2.5, the best practice is to leverage an event stream instead for anything related to a webhook based source plugin. So as you can see, I've already created event streams in my 2.5 platform. And if I go specifically to ServiceNow, I have a URL that I've already set up. This is the URL that I'd want to change for my event driven Ansible notification service. And just like I walked through in a previous video, I wanna put some sort of authentication token or authorization token to ensure that this is only coming directly from ServiceNow. So pretty simple change for the event driven Ansible notification service to go from 2.4 to 2.5, mostly around just actually setting up the event stream for the service. So jumping next to the REST messages. So if you're still leveraging the legacy REST messages that's part of ServiceNow, you will have to change the authorization URL. So instead of pointing to your controller slash API slash O slash authorize, or the same thing with API slash O slash token, you want to change this to actually point to your gateway instead. So whether it's the load balancer in front of the multiple platform gateways, or if you have a single one pointing directly to that, and you'll also just point to slash O slash authorize and slash O slash token. So that will ensure it points to the new endpoints that are no longer directly part of controller, but part of the, that new platform UI and platform API to ensure that you can get the necessary authorization and tokens for the 2.5 platform. So that's all that you have to change from this side. And then in the actual REST messages themselves, you will want to update the endpoints to once again point to that new centralized UI and then add in the new API endpoints to point to those job templates or workflow job templates. So again, no longer should you point at the individual controller instances. You want to point to that new platform UI with the new API endpoints to point to those. So after you update this application registry, you will want to make sure you get that OAuth token to work with the new endpoint that you've set up. And then any endpoints that you've previously set up for 2.4 or if you're setting new ones for 2.5, make sure you leverage this new API endpoint to hit those job templates. With Ansible Spoke, you may already have connections set up. You will need to set up a new connection or delete your existing one. So I do have, you know, obviously quite a few set up, but by default, when I add a connection into Ansible Spoke, give it a normal name, give your platform UI as the connection URL. And you will notice that by default, it has the slash API slash O slash authorize. You will have to modify this to make sure it only points to slash O slash authorize and slash O slash token. And then also this provider domain name will be that platform UI, whether it's a load balancer in front of it or the UI itself, rather than the individual controller endpoints. When you fill all of this out and you click create and get OAuth token, it will fail because by default, when I create this in ServiceNow, it will add in an extra script that does not work with these new endpoints. It'll give you a HTTP error 401. So you'll need to make sure after you do this and save, take the failure, that's fine. Then you'll basically go back into ServiceNow and you'll search for connections and credentials. You want to go to specifically that credentials endpoint and you'll want to make sure that all these are updated. Go to the auth application first and first get rid of this OAuth API script. By default, it will have an Ansible automation platform script, which you don't want. So regardless of what's in here, just make sure you clear it out and then save this application. And then when you go back into ServiceNow, you can go to the connections and credentials, go to connections. 
and then you can click get OAuth token because you've updated that entity profile to not use that backend script. It'll make sure that that OAuth API script is clear and won't run that extra validation behind the scenes that does not work with the 2.5 platform. So this is, will ensure that you've got a valid token. Then you also need to update the endpoints. So when it tries to launch job templates, that it will work with, once again, that new API endpoint. So if I go, instead of just going to credentials, if I go to connections, there's a section in the, connection, in the connection specifically for a version. By default, it's just V2. If I change that to be controller slash V2, it will then work with the 2.5 platform. Conveniently enough, Ansible spoke in ServiceNow. It has variabilized a lot of the different components. It's taking this connection URL that you filled out previously. And by default, it just provides the V2 as a version. If you update it to be controller slash V2, then it will work with those new endpoints and you'll be off and running. So this will then work for every aspect of Ansible Spoke since it will use all of those new controller API endpoints through that front end gateway. So I highly recommend updating any existing Ansible Spoke, REST messages, or event-driven Ansible notification service to leverage either event streams or those new API endpoints. So I updated all of my integration walkthroughs in my GitHub repository, which I'll link down below. It does include both options. So I've updated my tables to the left side to be 2.4 and older, and the right side to be 2.5. So whether, again, you're using REST messages, Ansible Spoke, or using the event-driven Ansible notification service, it walks through the various processes of what you need to make sure exists for the connectivity to work across the multiple versions. Thank you for taking the time to learn a little bit more how I can configure ServiceNow to work with the 2.5 Ansible Automation Platform. Thank you. Click my picture on the right to subscribe or click the image on the left to watch another video.